friends, we have just managed to drive our cute yellow van into Iraq. Many of our friends told us not to go and that it is the worst timing for a trip like this. As you probably already figured, we did it anyway. And here are our first impressions of the country. In this story, you will hear how we heard bombs falling down next to us. How I was called a terrorist. And how Iraq has proven that after eight years of traveling, we're still just beginners. We got ripped off a little bit. First off, we should probably talk about why we were told not to go to Iraq. Well, to put it shortly, Northern Iraq, or Iraqi Kurdistan, has not been getting along well with its bigger neighbors. Iran has bombed and shot missiles to it because they say Kurds are behind the protests in their country. And just one day before our journey, Turkish government sent dozens of missiles into Iraq as a revenge for the Istanbul bombing that Ankara blames on Kurdish terrorist groups. So, as you understand, there's a lot of tension in the air. But now, let's jump to the beginning of this story. The last day we spent in Turkey. Our adventure started on the banks of River Tigris. And I must say that the first two hours to get to the border were quite tense. Due to the bombing, the day before, Turkish army seemed to be at high alert. Wild, wild east. I think we were stopped about five or six times on our way to the border. And well, just look at us, trying to act normal while waving two huge army vehicles. Oh, but little did we know that things were soon about to change. Are we anxious? Yes, a little bit. Thank you for asking. Once we got to the border, some kids wanted to hitchhike onto our van. Yeah, it did not seem like a good idea to pick up hitchhikers 200 meters before the border. As we continued driving, we saw men with big automatic weapons. And although the border officer was a little bit surprised to hear that we want to be tourists in Iraq, he still let us through. Like this, we were out of Turkey. We just got stamped out of Turkey. But we are not in Iraq yet. Now, it was time for what we expected to be the hardest border crossing of our lives. Less than 24 hours ago, missiles had rained down about 20 kilometers from that crossing. Would they think we are spies? Terrorists? And well, then things started to happen. But not really in a way we expected. First thing that happened was that no one was carrying big guns anymore. And the border officers on the Iraqi side, instead of interrogating us, wanted to make pictures together. They even had an English-speaking person there, a worker to help us through the process. Passports, visas, guard documents. And about two hours later... We are in Iraq! <laughs> we are in Iraq! Yes, we had arrived. It felt good. But of course, our surprises did not end with a border crossing. And I guess the next chapter of this story should be called The Culture Shock. With about eight years of travel experience under our belts, it doesn't happen often that a country totally shocks us. But Iraq did it and in more than one way. First thing that did a trick to us was the traffic. All sorts of studies and surveys have been completed about world's traffic and most of them say that Istanbul has the worst. Well, I've driven many times during Istanbul rush hours. And believe me when I say it, compared to this here, driving in Istanbul is like a walk in a park. The traffic rules here are something else. Or, to be completely honest, I don't think there's any rules. We have seen people driving in opposite direction on a one-way highway. There's a lot of road stops. We have wiggled between herds of sheep, goats, cows. And well, the scariest are the rush hours, when two lines turn into four and nights, where trucks drive with a hundred on a road where I barely dare to go with 50. 
we've been now in Iraq for about 10 minutes in this time I've only peed myself once due to the traffic and now we'll see if we can go and get ourselves a sim card a few minutes after entering our first town another thing became obvious to us the little thing that we did not understand a word that was written anywhere around us. I have no doubt that this language thing is gonna be a huge problem. Just the fact that we can't read a word of Arabic. <laughs> oh, but it gets better. You probably know that those numbers we use in everyday life are called Arabic numbers, right? But the craziest thing is that in Arabic alphabet, they don't use them. And instead, numbers here look something like this. So I have to say that we kind of felt like little children that could not yet read. With the only small difference that uh, we also didn't understand the word that was spoken. In this region, people speak Arabic, Kurmanji Kurdish, Sorani Kurdish, Turkish, and as a fifth language, some know a little bit of English. So all jokes aside, I think that might be the reason why there is so many conflicts in this region. People speak so many languages here that they simply don't understand each other. And if you can't handle conflict by speaking it through, well, then violence happens. So all in all, you probably realized that our first day in a country was a bit of a mess. But as we got our essential things done, we had some time in the evening to learn the local numbers and prepare ourselves for the next day to come. Although we learned the numbers to be able to understand local markets and shops a bit better, then before we could get to this part, there was another surprise. A thing that we did not see coming. Everybody on the street is looking at us. Some way, we were treated like celebrities. I'm not really sure if it's a good or bad thing, but everyone wants to take photos with us. And I'm quite sure that by now, social media here must be full of our smiling faces. But before we talk more about local people and the safety situation, we wanted to go and have a look at the local store to understand the culture and prices a little better. I must say that it was surprising to see so many Western products in the store, from chocolates to cleaning. It was all the same brands that we're used to seeing in Europe. And even the prices were similar. Milk costs one euro, cheese three euros, and a bottle of beer one and a half euros. So from our point of view, a little bit cheaper than Europe, yet compared to Turkey, the last country we visited, Iraq seemed to be a bit more expensive. There was few essential things that we could not find in local stores. One of them bread and another vegetables. Turns out these things are always bought from the street. And the whole bag like this cost us uh, one euro and 30 cents. Super cool. And bakeries. And luckily such essential things were actually quite cheap. Oh. So four together was 30 cents. Oh, and I almost forgot. In Iraq, cash is king. I feel like I have an illegal business somewhere. That's why I have so much cash. And so far, we have not seen a single place that would accept bank cards. Markets have always been one of our favorite places while traveling. And so the next spot for us was obvious. As we were tasting some of the local Kurdish sweets, suddenly a random stranger hooked himself onto us. He spoke a few sentences of English and insisted on translating between us and the vendor. We bought some candy, and right before our eyes, we saw ourselves getting scammed. He translated the sum wrong on purpose, and then took the extra money for himself. Although the number was relatively small, then it still felt horrible to see yourself being ripped off in front of your eyes. It's a damn mess and everybody's just trying to get a piece of our white little asses. It was just a hit below the belt, and for a second, we lost trust in everyone around us. Yet, there was one more thing we wanted to accomplish before we could leave the market. We had bought the beautiful Kurdish dress for Lizo in Eastern Turkey, where Kurds make up almost half of the population. Yet we still wanted some traditional clothes for me as well. I asked the first gentleman on the market who I saw in the local clothes. His name happened to be Nizar. 
Straight away, he said that he would take us to his own tailor. Honestly, we did not like it one bit. It felt like another scam, yet we still went along. After trying some of the clothes, everything felt even more off. It was obvious that the tailor was Nizar's friend, but were they going to cheat us together? After hearing the price of about 50 euros, we were skeptical. We said that the highest we can pay is 40, and what happened next came to us like thunder out of a clear sky. It was shocking. Nizar said okay, and he paid the difference from his own pocket. That was the craziest thing I could ever have imagined. I tried to pay him the difference after we had left the shop, but he would not accept it. Part of me was feeling bad because I had distrusted him. Yet another part was utterly grateful. I can't believe that he, instead of letting us bargain, he just said he's gonna pay the difference. That was unbelievable. His kindness had made us feel safe again. And from this moment, we started to have trust in strangers again. Ever since that moment, the locals have only made this trust stronger. The very same night, we were treated so kindly to local foods. Yes, red beets and turnip are not the best street food we have ever tried. But the Iraqi kebab for dinner was truly delicious. And the craziest thing was that neither of those places would accept our money. We insisted, but no. They said we're their guest. They didn't ask, accept our money. It's crazy, it's... Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. We feel so special. And the kindness does not end there. Almost every day, beside the pictures, someone offers us food and asks us over for tea. I think the craziest example of this was when we took a wrong turn and ended up on a dead-end street. First, a local gentleman helped us turn around and then he asked us for a cup of tea. Due to the language barrier, we did not speak a word, yet we felt the love in the air and when we left, they didn't let us go before giving us two boxes of dates. Such warmth from the locals has really made us feel safe in Iraq. Which now brings us to the last topic, safety. I have to say that a constant reminder about the safety situation are the control points when you're driving in Iraq. That was our first road checkpoint. Before every town, church and the tourist attraction, another checkpoint. There is a point where a few armed gentlemen check our passports. Although we have driven through more than 10 of such places, then still it is a little bit crazy. Yet when you ask locals about them, they say that such security checks make them feel more safe. I guess it is just another cultural difference. Oh, and I almost forgot. Yes, we have also heard bomb explosions in northern Iraq. It happened while we were stopped in one of the checkpoints. While we were waiting in this checkpoint, we heard three explosions. Um, Not sure if you guys heard it, but another bang and this one we felt like a shake. It was really quite terrifying to feel that shake when a missile hit the rocky ground. Yet after seeing our scared faces, I remember the local officer saying in his broken English, no problem, Turki bomb PKK, and the calm in his eyes spoke more than thousand words. Suddenly I realized that the missiles that had hit Iraq a day before we entered were not the first nor the last. Everyone here is used to this. Such things are not even discussed by locals anymore. And there is absolutely no hate towards the neighbors shooting the missiles. Actually, it's quite the opposite. Many people in Iraqi Kurdistan speak Turkish and they proudly share their experiences of traveling to their big neighbor. Many take pride in shared culture with the Turkish. After realizing this, my mood went quickly from scared to sad. And sad because not everyone in Turkey feels the same way, thanks to the help of one-sided media. Iraqi Kurdistan 
is at times portrayed as a terrorist state. Our Turkish friends warned us not to come here because of what they had heard on the media. And I'll be honest with you, it felt horrible to be called a terrorist on social media after we posted a picture in those Kurdish clothes. But I guess saying that all Kurdish people are terrorists is as absurd as saying that all Muslims are terrorists. The people living here are the ones suffering the most from this terror. ISIS, PKK, Al-Qaeda, what we have read in papers, they have felt on their own skin. And I think it's simply a miracle that the locals here are still so kind, trusting and welcoming after living through all of this. Friends, that was our first video from Iraq. And to be honest, it has been a lot to process. Already in the first days, we've learned so much and uh, we are sure that uh, the adventure we're gonna have in this country over the next month is just gonna be something else. In the next video, we're gonna visit a sacred city of a secret religion that is so holy that you can't even wear shoes in the whole place. <laughs> Until then, you can go ahead and check out that playlist here with all of our videos on the journey from Europe to Japan so far. And we will see you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye, God. Bye, God. <laughs>